Yes. Uh, yeah. Hi, everyone. So yeah, I'm Boshra. I'm from uh, the University of Stuttgart, and I'm going to tell you about computational storytelling with Pluto. Um, so to start off, a little motivation. Um, have you ever sat in a classroom and you had something like this? So basically, you're looking at some numbers, some letters, some symbols, uh, maybe even a language you don't even understand, and you're wondering, what am I even looking at? Um, yeah, well, this way of teaching was developed because back then we were kind of limited to the blackboard, so you had to find some symbols to communicate your ideas in a way that everyone could understand. But thankfully, we're in the age of technology and we're not limited to this anymore. And this is where Pluto comes into play. So Pluto is basically a programming environment for the Julia language that was designed with two goals in mind, to be more fun and accessible. So we want code to be um, accessible, so easy for someone who's like new to this to understand and read it basically, and also to be more fun to kind of break the barriers of what we're used to uh, in coding and in uh, well storytelling. And so what we want to use, so we want to, first of all, well, keep the text and equations that we're familiar with because they're still useful, of course, but we want to add a way to integrate code directly in our stories. And we also want to add some interactivity, so to make everything more fun. So we want basically the ability to share some functional stuff, some, some functional code or a package that you wrote, but then also like uh, things that are uh, more representative, more intuitive, say plots, say uh, different input data or stuff like this. And what are we going to do with all of this? We're going to put it together in what we call storytelling. So what does this mean? Um, this means basically any story that you want to tell. So this doesn't have to be limited to, yeah, you just, um, telling a story to a child. This can be like a program you're working on, a project you're working on, updating your supervisor, teaching something. It can be anything that you want to basically explain. And we want to do it in a way that we're not just limited, uh, like I said, to the traditional things that we're uh, limited with, but in a more interactive way. So what is a better way to show you what we mean by this than with some examples? So I have a couple of notebooks here that we worked on that can kind of show you this idea. And I fit them into three categories. So we'll uh, first start with the first one, which is kind of the classical tale is what I call it. And it's basically this notebook here. So in this notebook, we um, are telling a story in the sense of what you would understand under a story. So say you are a biologist or like a historian or whatever, and you want to really just narrate something. So you can start by just using text. And we added some emojis here to make it a bit more fun. Um, and the story here, for example, in this, in this specific notebook is the story of the ozone layer. So in a nutshell, a couple of years ago or a lot of years ago, we noticed that there was a hole in, in, the, in the sky and then people were like, oh, that's a problem. And it turns out that it was because of this specific chemical that we call CFC. And so the countries or everyone in the world get together and then they, were, they decided to basically stop using these chemicals. And when they stopped using these chemicals, uh, spoiler alert, actually, it got better. And instead of telling you the story like this, I could just write it, or I could also show you the effect of actually joining this protocol. So this is the countries over the years that decided to join the protocol. So here, nobody has started because they didn't know about the problem yet. And then as the years go by, more and more countries join. So here you see in blue the countries that joined, and hopefully at the end, everyone joined. And then also we can see the effect of how many chemicals were, um, were ejected, let's say, or like these bad chemicals that they basically committed to not using anymore. You can also see over the years that it went less and less, so this consumption. And so actually you see that there was a real effect of joining the protocol and then actually using less of these chemicals. And finally, we can also see that the ozone layer itself recovered. So it actually got better uh, because yeah, you basically see more blue here, but the video kind of repeats. And so the idea with this notebook is basically, you see here, for example, we didn't use any code, but we used the code to add a bit more intuition to the story that we're trying to tell. Now, this is just one way of doing it. This is, um, like I said, a more narrative way. 
What is probably more interesting to you is the second way of doing it, which is um, by integrating both the code and the, uh, and the text and the equations that we were talking about. So in this notebook, I wanted to explain a simple concept, which is fractals. And if you know about fractals, it's kind of, it's actually based on math. So it's just like a mathematical concept. But we want to, to explain this to someone who has no idea. So we want to really go through the steps, uh, everything step by step. And we also wanted to show how to do it in Julia in a very cool and compact way. And so basically when I designed this notebook, I wanted to have one main thing, um, basically, the idea was we know the TikTok generation have a short attention span, so they will probably not go over the whole thing. They will just jump to the cool thing. So first of all, we attract the attention with this nice GIF in the beginning. And then at the end, you have, uh, when you scroll down, you have this thing here where you could just move stuff around and then, oh, we have some cool shapes and you can interact with them. And when you move this, you have, well, different fractals. And what the idea is, is basically, uh, fractals are based on uh, the series in math. So basically you have a start number and then for each number in this 2D grid, you kind of calculate a series. And if it converges, you uh, put it in blue. If it doesn't, you put it in red. So this is like just the concept in a nutshell. And then this is exactly what we're, what we're explaining in the notebook, but we do it in a step-by-step -step manner. So we start with a simple example of a 1D series. So we can use sliders here to see, oh, if we change the first number, then the whole series changes here. I don't know if you can see it. So we change one number and then the whole thing that builds on it changes. Then we can add also some comments here. We can also show how to do it in code. So here we want to actually show the code because we want it to be reusable. And I actually like this function because this is a very nice Julia way, very compact way to write it. Um, we can also add some interactivity in there. So like some questions, for example, this is like a question, for example, for homework or when teaching a class, you can have a hint here and then you can show the right answer for the person that's doing the homework. And then we build on that concept, we add more code, but then with also with examples, we add some notes here that may be relevant, but like not really um, yeah, that important. And basically we build this step-by-step -step by integrating different mediums. So integrating code, integrating the sliders, the interactivity that we like. Here, for example, you see that we have for a specific number of, uh, here you have like the right answer because you're looking for the right number and so on. Like for example, we also have this uh, picker, which is an object that we coded, but instead of keeping, of having the code of this picker, how it's coded, we just keep the important stuff. And then we kind of hide the code that is irrelevant for our story here in the appendix, but it's still there. So you can still reuse this complex number picker, for example, but here in this um, upper part of the notebook, it's a bit hidden because we just want to really focus on the concept. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it for the second notebook. We also have a third notebook where we try to combine both ideas. So in the beginning, we want to, for example, explain what data is, what data sets is. So we don't just have um, sliders. We also have like something like this, where we can change from pictures to tables, to have an intuition of what data looks like. We can have some plots. So it also like interacts directly. And then here in this case, we want to explain what a random forest um, algorithm is. So basically this is like a decision tree and uh, you have a small game here basically to brew your own wine. So if you put in the numbers yourself, the code tells you or based on this decision tree, if your wine is good or bad. And um, yeah, you can just play around with it. And fun fact, if you just Add more alcohol is just good. <laughs> yeah. And in this code, for example, this um, thing here is like the main idea that we want to show is the decision tree. But in this case, we had to code a lot of stuff to make it a pretty tree. But we hide all of this for the notebook itself because, yeah, we want to focus on the main idea. But still, it's still there. You can just take it, reuse the same code. And that's basically it. Um, yeah, so these are the three examples. And what I want you to go away with is basically, even when the task feels same old, there's still story living in the code, meaning no matter what task or what thing you're doing, you can still make your code a story or your, like the information that you're trying to pass uh, in a more cool way, I would say. And um, yeah, finally, what does this mean for you? Uh, how do you use it for your own work? Well. Just use Pluto. 
Pluto is fun, and it just gives you the option of integrating many things. I mean, you don't have to, but if you find a usefulness in this, you can yeah, use the plots, use the code. If, say, you're working, I don't know, with music data, you can add uh, some music in there, or if you're working with different plots and then yeah, changing images or whatever, you can add the images directly. Um, yeah, and also, especially you can add the code that you want to show or hide it whenever you need to hide it. And when you're telling the story, think about building it gradually, think about the main concepts and then adding here and this stuff that is relevant, that is not relevant. And that's basically it. And we have a huge collection of such notebooks to just inspire you. So the idea really is here to inspire you and hope you get out with something for your own work. You, of course, you don't have to, but we're very happy to. And you can just scan the QR code. We have a huge collection that you can take a look at. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Basha.